Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by the Chrome Soft Golf Ball from Callaway. Hello, I'm Matt Adams, and this is your Golf Central update. Dustin Johnson with one of the later tee times on Thursday. He tees off at 3.06 p.m. Eastern time. He'll be playing alongside of Xander Shoffley and Victor Hovland. He spoke with Kira K. Dixon. Yeah, I mean, I've played here a couple times. I played here last year, you know, a few times. So I've, I've been to the course a little bit, but, you know, I haven't played it that much. Um, it's a really good golf course. It's, you know, it's a desert course, obviously, but, you know, if you can keep it on the grass, you know, you can you can shoot some good scores around here. But, <laughs> you know, so, if, you know, for me, for the most part, yeah, it's just, you know, if I can drive it, you know, drive it and play, then I feel like I'm going to have a nice week. Uh, obviously, the Ryder Cup is still a big topic that, that everyone's excited to discuss coming off of the Ryder Cup, which was very successful for you. How how much extra energy did you get from that to then bring into your regular game on the PGA Tour? Yeah, I mean, well, Ryder Cup, too, is, you know, obviously it was a lot of fun and it was a great week, you know, played really nicely and, you know, the team won. So, so it was, you know, it was great. But, you know, it's kind of, for me, it's kind of the end of the year, really. But, you know, and then obviously here we are a couple of weeks later, you know, starting the new season, mm -hmm. you know, playing my first event. So, um, so got to kind of, you know, get kind of mm -hmm. fired back up for it a little bit, you know, kind of took the last couple of weeks off. So, you know, just kind of getting back into the swing of things yeah. here. And, but too, it's, you know, it is the fall and, you know, for me, I don't really feel like the, I mean, even though this is a big event, there's yeah. a few more big events, you know, this fall, but, you know, I kind of like to take this time of year off. And so I'm playing this event, and then I don't know if I'm going to play again until probably, you know, middle of January or something. So, um, you know, I do want to play well here, and I'd like, obviously, would like to be able to get to Maui. So that's kind of one of the goals. But mm -hmm. um, you got got some work to do, though, for sure. October is Hispanic Heritage Month, and we turn the spotlight towards an often disregarded faction of the golf industry, the maintenance crews. Nearly two-thirds of all golf maintenance crews are made up of Latino immigrants, and most courses would struggle to function without them. Jaime Diaz brings us the story of one golf course that has leaned on their superintendent of Mexican-American descent for nearly 35 years. He's the backbone of this whole place, without a doubt. I mean, this is what Lazaro has turned this place into right here, 100%. He wanted this place to come out and be, like he always tells us, this is my backyard, my house. Oh, he's just so giving and, you know, I mean, I'm telling you, it's like, I get choked up because, <laughs> wait, I didn't expect that, <laughs> sorry. Um... He's put so much into this place, it's unbelievable. This place wouldn't be here without Laz. I can tell you that right now. This is a routine, my life, and do it every day, every single day. Sometimes I have to do six days a week or seven days. Depending on how busy at my job. Superintendents are selfless. Their day starts at night. The night often ends their day. As for Lazaro Flores, who was born and raised in Oaxaca, Mexico, his path across the border and into the heart and soul of his community is one worth recognition and celebration. It's completely different like that. Five, six years, they, they start training their kids to work before to go to school. I live at home about 10 years old. I came to Baja, California. You know, back home, you had to work. I had to work when I was eight years old. So you, you helped out, and you helped out because of the pressure of your, of your siblings. You know, everybody worked at, the, at your home. Rafael Barajas is one of 10 Hispanic certified superintendents in the United States. And he's the only Hispanic to have served as president of the Golf Course Superintendents Association of America. Like Rafael and so many other immigrants, Flores' gateway into the workforce was using his hands to get ahead. He picked fields and trees, fruits and vegetables, and he did it all with a purpose and a plan. I work about 
two years to save money buy one bicycle. No man, when I got my first bicycle, I feel like a king of the world. <laughs> like a king of the world, you know. So uh, you, one guy's front, one guy's back. You just brush up with the hole so not make too much noise. The work ethic and dedication obviously comes from the culture. Uh, the Hispanic culture, uh, hard workers, right? They are definitely the, the heroes behind the scenes, right? They're, they're the ones that make things happen. When I came to the United States, I remember I was in a, a mountain. I remember we come down to the city, we can't get any bus. Oh, because today's a holiday. That's why they not work today. So I remember it was July 4. So we stayed under, under the bush for two days, you know? Not eat, not food, not nothing, just stay there. That trip across the border would be Lazaro's last without a green card, which he got in 1987. The same year he started parking carts and picking the range for $4.50 an hour at what is now Goat Hill Park in Oceanside, California. The Hispanic community is extremely important to golf and to the maintenance and the agronomy part of it. Uh, I can tell you that uh, out of all the people that work in the golf industry, approximately 85% of them are Hispanic descent. They are certainly a critical part of keeping golf courses in good shape. Goat Hill never had much of a budget and was always short on staff. For most of its life, it looked more like a goat track than a golf course. In 1987, this was nine holes, but all it's water by hand. Goat Hill, 22 years ago, I can tell you it was a mountain of dirt. I literally seen people show up to the goat with their own piece of sod, because there was no grass. But despite the variety of challenges, Flores and his tenacity kept it open for business. Hard worker, all the way. He has a heart to work just how hard he would grind out here just to keep this place alive. And he would do so much. He has had several bosses at Goat Hill Park, but not all of them treated him with the respect he deserved. At one point, he went as far as refusing to be fired. When that guy took this place, and he let go everybody. But I keep do something here. So I start pull the car, kick the balls over there, and he come to me and say, you not listen to me? You not go home? I said, hey. You're not hurt, you're not paying me. So I want to stay here. <laughs> you know, to, to get fired and then come back the next day and say, I'll work for free, what does that tell you? To me, it's two things. It's passion and dedication and, and, and love, really, for, for the job that he's, that, that he's doing. In 2014, a group led by John Ashworth helped save Goat Hill and took over the lease from the city of Oceanside. In came new leadership. What stayed the same was Lazaro Flores. Wow, look at that guy. Almost done. <laughs> yeah, I think we're done by lunch, maybe. Yeah. That's what he wants to do. You know, it's only work if you'd rather be doing something else, and he would rather not be doing anything else. He's a eucalyptus here. He's been rooted here. You know, his boots have roots. <laughs> You live is like one tree. You have to put good roots down. If you got good roots down, all the branches gonna hold it. If you got bad roots, all the branches gonna fall, fall down. Like now, I stay hard. My parents, my job, and, and life. You know? That's making me happy. I'm not rich, but I feel rich. <laughs>